I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us here at the Castle Troy Park Hotel on this lovely, lovely occasion, our 13th annual Alumni Awards celebration. And this evening we honour the individual achievements of three of our outstanding alumni. Now, I know you're all looking forward to learning a little bit more about our 2018 award recipients, and you will in just a little time. First, I'm delighted to call on the chairman of the UL alumni, Mr. Bobby O'Connor, to say just a few words. Bobby. Thank you, uh, Juliet. Um, President, members of Governing Authority, uh, distinguished guests, can I say a good evening and welcome. I myself am a UL alumnus and I'm chair of the alumni board and it gives me enormous pleasure to uh, welcome you all here this evening. Uh, can I begin by sincerely congratulating our three award winners, uh, Niall Brown, Professor Bridget Laffin and Michael Kelly. This year's uh, awards, I guess in terms of the, the nominations and the quality of the nominations that we got this year, it really reaffirmed what, what we already knew, that is that our alumni, they're, they're genuinely personify all that is excellent in both the University of Limerick and, and its graduate community. It's been a great year for, uh, for Limerick. Um, on August 19th, um, the uh, senior uh, earning team uh, brought back the McCarthy Cup to, uh, to, to Limerick. And uh, arriving uh, in the GAA uh, uh, grounds to meet 42,000 uh, people. Fifteen uh, were uh, students or graduates of the University of Limerick. That's an, an astounding um, success. And uh, the University of Limerick um, was uh, the Irish University of the Year, um, announced by the uh, Sunday Times uh, for 2019. So the Sunday Times has now become my favorite newspaper. We buy from family farms in every county in Ireland and therefore you know it's, it's all about local and it's all about our people because we, we get supplied by them and the money goes back into the business, so there's a multiplier effect, so that's, that's very important. The fond memories of fond student memories, life, yeah. I mean, where would you start? We had a great time. Stables are still there. <laughs> and, and we would have been good customers, and I think if the Stables was an airline, I'd say we'd be at least platinum members at this <laughs> stage. Um, but I suppose one of the other memories about college was there were some great bands that the Students' Union organised, so in our time, we got to see the Cranberries a few times, we got to see the Stunning, so that, that was all wonderful. was simply a wish because I was in Carsevine at school and there was a brochure from something called the NIHE and one of the areas that they were going to open up was European studies and I read it and I thought I'm going there. It was as instant as that. I went home, took the brochure home, told my parents I'm going to Limerick. My parents said there's no university in Limerick. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going and I said I most certainly am and that's it. <laughs> Eye on the prize from the start. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Besides meeting your husband, Michael, here, what are, what are your fond memories? 
from the early days? Well, I think no one who's gone to University of Limerick over the last 20 years can understand what it was like in the early days. I remember walking down, it was almost like a boreen, to the, to the White House, to the East Room to register as a student. There were only 100 and fewer than 120 of us. The great thing was we knew everybody. We knew the staff, we knew the students, we had joint, I mean, things that you could no longer do in a university. We went drinking with the staff, with the professors, <laughs> and we had parties in their houses. <laughs> Nothing that you could ever, ever do today. Uh, so it was a very difficult. <laughs> When I, when I started growing first, I was really shocked to discover we've, even though we consider ourselves an agrarian kind of society, we've, we, we import about 90% of the fruit and veg we eat in this country, which is astonishing. And um, the impact of that, I suppose, on our, on our health and the health of our planet is, is, pr is profound, as we know. So what we see as our job is to get people to, to grow some of their own food. It doesn't have to be about self-sufficiency or anything close to it, but just by growing some food, it, it, it sort of puts, you know, turns on the light bulb in people's head and re-establishes re a connection with food. I least and myself started going out, I think, in, um, we, got, we hooked up in the Parkway Disco, which I'm sure many of you will remember. And there's an ongoing debate about who made the first move on who, but I, I think it was definitely her, so. <laughs> we don't need to address that, but okay. No, but her. we will. Alicia, it was you. <laughs>